Hi juniors, this is Mrs. Abriani here to go over the English 3A Unit 2 discussion, American Gothic Literature. Okay, as always, create a new Google document in your drive, copy and paste this discussion prompt into that document so that you can write your response there. It's a four part uh, prompt, so you're gonna need to sit down and write out your uh, responses and a Google Docs the best place it automatically saves as you go. Step one, you'll begin your post by commenting on one classmate and in the start of your post you're gonna say I commented on so-and-so's post. Okay, first off, to comment on someone else's post there is a blue link at the bottom that says comment on this response. That's what you click and then you respond to them. In your post that you're gonna uh, offer up after that. You started off by saying I commented on and put the student's name post before you launch into your response, okay? Um, so when you comment on someone else's post, make sure you're respectful and thoughtful. Here's some sentence starters for you to consider. One piece of advice I have for you is I really like what you said about blah blah blah. I agree with this or that. I would like to hear more about blah, blah, blah. Maybe they didn't really explain something fully. You're not the teacher, but it would be easy for you to say, I'd like to hear more about that. You started saying something interesting, but didn't quite finish, okay? All right, and then it's on to your response. Now, this discussion is about the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Cask of Amontillado. Cask is a barrel. Amontillado is a type of wine. Okay, so this cask of Amontillado is an object that plays an important role in this story. It's a short story, but it's written a while ago with language we no longer use. So, as you read it, I highly encourage you to reread it and to watch this video. It's got these creepy animated people, but it really helps you to understand the story. And as they're talking and using these funny words that you don't understand, you can see their actions and you can see their, their expressions on their creepy faces and kind of get a, a more out of the story than you would maybe just reading it by yourself. I want to point out too, another helpful tool is American Gothic Literature Tutorial. Uh, slide 19, there's a list of some vocabulary words you will encounter in this story, okay? Now, this link is actually on the next assignment, Unit 2 Activity. You can find it there, or I'd be happy to send it to you um, right now. Message me on Hangouts. But this is an interesting story. I think it's great to watch the video. Definitely important to read some of the vocab and look up other vocab words you might not know that aren't on this list as you're reading. Okay, step two. This is where you are writing your responses to three different little mini prompts, okay? This first one is to identify three to five examples of figurative language within the story, okay? Again, the tutorial is your friend. American Gothic Literature, slide five, has a list of different types of figurative language and what they are, okay? So you're gonna find some of these in the actual story, three to five of those, and explain them. For example, you might hear some foreshadowing going on. That's where you get little clues at the beginning or middle of the story about what's gonna happen at the end. Um, Ed Allan Poe gives a lot of clues. For example, um, this guy, Montressor, he's leading this guy, Fortunato, into these caves. And he dismisses all of his staff at his big mansion that night and tells them not to bother him. That means he's up to something, right? That's foreshadowing. Gives you a clue that he's up to no good, something bad's about to happen. Imagery. Poe uses a lot of imagery. He describes just what you see in this picture here. Bones and dirt and cold and damp and there's nitre growing on the walls which is kind of like a white mold. I think it's salt buildup. Um, that creates a mood that's another type of figurative language in a way. What is the atmosphere? How do all this imagery creates a certain feeling or mood? Okay, Sensory details, he uses a lot of those, especially with the dampness. And he keeps warning his buddy that he's leading down into the 
caves here. Oh, this isn't good for your health. I just want to warn you. The dampness is bad. I don't want to hurt you. You can turn back if you want. He keeps warning him like something bad's going to happen here. So, um, and then the unreliable narrator, that's actually the topic of the unit two activity right after this. You write an essay about unreliable narrator, but if you can find some clues about that now, um, it would help you lend itself well to your next activity. So three to five examples of figurative language that you find in the story. Hyperbole, exaggeration might be another one. Um, some students have written about irony, which is a really tricky one, but whatever other figurative language you know about that you can find in the story, you're welcome to write about as well. Three to five examples, explain what they are in the story. Okay, second prompt you're addressing here. Analyze the meaning of some symbols in the story. Now, a great tool to help you, again, in the tutorial, slide 13, this lesson activity, part C asks you about symbolism. Put an X in this box, click submit, and you'll see a sample answer that discusses a lot of symbolism. Okay, use the tutorial. There's tons of information. I know sometimes you skip over these lesson activities, but in this case, it is very helpful to discuss symbolism. Some symbols you may have seen your fellow students, uh, classmates writing about, uh, maybe the family coat of arms that Fortunato asks Montressor about. Montressor is the name of his family. It's been around for a long time. They're probably very wealthy. So they have a symbol that everyone would see and know, oh, that represents the Montressor family. It'd be on their mansions. It would be on their horses' saddles. It would be on any of their property, their gates, their fences around their property, okay? Any servants' uniforms, the Montressor family coat of arms. And this one is a foot stepping on a snake. What could that possibly mean in terms of Fortunato and Montressor, okay? The caves deep down when they're finally getting to the, here's the cask, the barrel of wine, Montellato wine. There's bones everywhere. What do bones represent? In most cases, death, right? This is a symbol that's telling you someone's going to die, okay? So think about any symbols you can find along the way in the story and write about it. Third thing you're addressing is how does this figurative language and symbolism um, determine the overall meaning of the story. What is an overall meaning of a story? Well, think about what motivates the narrator Montressor. Um, pay attention to wording, the word choice at the beginning, the very opening. He kind of lays it all out there. He says, the thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. Okay, we're looking at word choice here, revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that gave me utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. And more word choice here. This was a point definitely settled, but the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. He wants to get away with it. He wants to be immune from punishment himself, but he wants to punish. So this tells you a lot about Montressor's point of view, what motivates him, okay? So that's something that you can talk about in the overall meaning of the story. What's the theme of it? What's the meaning of it? Uh, this dude wants revenge. He's mad about something. Okay, in sum, you did step one, responded to a student. And you've done step two, you've addressed these three things. You've given examples of figurative language specifically from the story. You've um, analyzed a symbol from the story. And you've talked about how those things connect and um, il illustrate the overall meaning of the story, okay? If you have any questions, talk to me or any of the English teachers, and we'll be happy to help. Um, You've got this Google Doc where you wrote down all your smart ideas, copy and paste those into a new post in the American Gothic discussion in your English class, and you are done. It will really help you out with the next assignment, which I will also try to explain uh, in another video. Take care. Enjoy.